Okay, so we, we've heard a lot about uh, metabolic therapies already. This is a little bit of a different approach. Uh, it is a drug, um, but the principles of the metabolic therapy are the same as uh, what Dr. Seafried has talked about. And um, <clears throat> so what is DCA? Uh, it's, a, it's a chemical, it's a byproduct of water chlorination. It's, so it's found in chlorinated water in minute quantities. Um, the way I explain it to patients who want to know kind of what exactly it is, is it's sort of like a combination of salt and vinegar put together, um, chemically bonded together. So you can't actually mix salt and vinegar and get DCA, but the chemical structure is similar to those two things put together. Um, it's easily dissolved in water, um, so it's easy to make oral liquid out of it and to make intravenous formulations out of it. Uh, it penetrates into the brain, so what, what that means to us is that uh, it's a nice uh, therapy for brain tumors, whereas when you have standard uh, chemotherapies, there's very few that penetrate into the brain, so this gives us um, uh, another option for treatment of brain tumors. Um, and an interesting point about the drug is it interferes with its own metabolism. And that's very unusual for most drugs. Uh, most drugs, um, you give a fixed dose and you end up with a steady state level right away. Whereas with DCA, the more you give, um, the slower it gets broken down in the body. And so it tends to build up over time. And that's important uh, in terms of the dosing. And that's why people sometimes have problems using it. Okay, so how does it work? Um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, we've heard a lot about the Warburg effect, cancer cells using sugar, um, burning it through fermentation, even without the presence of oxygen. What DCA does, it inhibits the enzyme called PDH kinase, or PDK, and the result of that is it activates an enzyme called PDH, or, uh, and that results in uh, a shift from the fermentation of the glycolysis to glucose burning with oxygen, or, or oxidative phosphorylation, glucose oxidation. Um, so that, in effect, um, can shut down the metabolism of cancer cells because they're not able to, to burn glucose through the oxidative phosphorylation mechanism. They, they don't use the mitochondria. They prefer the fermentation. So if you shut that down, they, they can't make energy, can't make ATP, so the cell will die. Um, there are other things that DCA does as well. Uh, it also affects the voltage uh, on the mitochondrial membrane, and that's called delta psi m, or mitochondrial membrane potential. Um, and by reducing that voltage, that starts the cascade of natural cell suicide. Um, that's called apoptosis. Uh, so DC also triggers natural cell suicide. So even though it's not a natural medication in itself, it triggers a natural cell death process, and that's only in the cancer cell, not in your good cells because they're already undergoing apoptosis. That's an ongoing process. Um, there's other mechanisms of how DCA works. We're not really sure yet, but some stuff's been published about uh, potentially being anti-angiogenic, so blocking the growth of blood vessels in tumors. Uh, it may also work by influencing the, um, the pH of the tumor microenvironment, so it may alkalinize the tumor environment as well. There's some research on that, but nothing definitive yet. Um, so that's just the mechanism. You know, you've seen all this already. Um, so DCA, you can see here, it interferes right here. It blocks this enzyme, this pyruvate dehydrogenase, which allows PDH to work effectively and takes the pyruvate and brings it into the mitochondria here, and then you can generate the ATP there. So it shuts down the fermentation pathway. So the original research for this was done by Michalakis. He was, uh, he's in Canada, he's in Alberta. Um, they published a paper, which was a rat study, uh, where they looked at non-small cell uh, human uh, lung tumors put into the rats, breast cancer cells, and glioblastoma. They grew the tumors, and then they treated the rats with the DCA, and they found very rapid tumor shrinkage. Um, and then subsequent to that, that was in 2007 that was published. Um, subsequent to that, uh, DCA has been investigated for a whole variety of human cancers. You can see the long list here, um, mainly uh, lab studies, so all this refers to either in vitro or a mouse model. Okay, so then we have some in vitro data too, which is interesting. It's not been published. Um, potential synergism with metformin. So again, going back to the metabolic mechanism, metformin can do a few things. It, it acts as an mTOR inhibitor. Um, it also reduces the average blood glucose level, so the same sort of mechanism. If we, it's again, simulating fasting to lower your average blood glucose level. Um, it can synergize with, uh, there's a targeted therapy called uh, Tarceva or Lotinib. 
Uh, there's also synergism with different chemos, but some of our in vitro work, we've seen antagonism with chemos too. So it's, uh, it should not automatically just be given with a chemo in the hopes of boosting the chemo because it can interfere as well. And what we do normally is we do a, um, a chemo sensitivity or chemo resistance assay if a patient wants to combine the DCA on the same day as the chemo because then we'll get an idea of whether it's going to uh, synergize and boost the chemo or it might interfere. Um, then what's actually been published in humans with DCA, um, the first study was done um, by the group in Alberta. They did a glioblastoma study. It was supposed to be 50 patients, but it ended up only being five patients once they finally published it. I have my ideas of why that happened. I, I think personally they, they overdosed the patients with the DCA. Um, however, despite that, the five patients that they did publish on, um, two of the patients took DCA alone for glioblastoma, no standard treatments, and they had tumor shrinkage. Um, two others took uh, standard treatments, which would be chemotherapy and radiation and maybe surgery. And in addition, they also got DCA and their response seemed to be much better than average. In other words, um, they survived longer uh, than what would have been expected. Um, there's a case published of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma treated with DCA, complete remission uh, after the patient failed standard therapy, including chemo. Uh, there's a case published of uh, gallbladder cancer or cholangiocarcinoma, um, and that was DCA combined with an antacid and combined with tamoxifen, which is normally used for breast cancer and would have no activity in gallbladder cancer by itself. Um, we published a case showing some of the um, uh, subtler benefits of DCA. Uh, in this case, the patient had an unknown primary tumor uh, in the muscle of the leg with spread to the liver, and um, the DCA resulted in a very significant pain reduction for this fellow. He was on about 200, 250 milligrams a day of morphine for the severe pain in his leg because of the, the tumor being there. Um, the pain was unresponsive to radiation therapy, and we treated him with DCA, and over a, a period of a few months, he went down from, from 200 milligrams a day of morphine down to nothing. Um, and we have a case that we've published of metastatic uh, kidney cancer, Oops. Um, renal squamous cell carcinoma, a very unusual kidney cancer. Um, uh, that patient had metastatic disease, they operated on her, they took out what they could, they left some disease behind, we have all the uh, records of that. Um, and the patient got a dose of palliative radiation just for life prolongation or pain control. Um, and we gave DCA after the radiation, and all the remaining cancer completely disappeared, and that patient is now, I believe, about six years cancer-free. Um, <clears throat> so we have a number of other cases which we're working on publishing, but uh, I can just give you an overview. Uh, a lot of patients do respond to this drug. It's not perfect, just like any cancer treatment. But in our experience, about 60% do respond to it. Um, and we define just response as either biochemical response or tumor shrinkage, tumor stabilization, or uh, palliation such as pain reduction. Um, occasionally we do see a complete remission like the kidney cancer case. And in our practice we're seeing that in, in about 1 in 50 or 1 out of 100, which is, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's surprising considering most of these are stage 4 cancers. Um, some of the cases that we have that uh, we may be able to publish. One is a, a young fellow with a metastatic melanoma, 30-year-old male, and we have CT evidence that proves uh, a partial response according to the official oncology criteria. And he's now, um, I believe the last time I saw him, there was no evidence of the cancer, so we're hoping that he's completely disease-free now, but he's due for a scan. A uh, 50-year-old lady who had glioblastoma. Uh, she had the standard surgery and radiation and uh, temozolomide chemo for a year, but she started DCA in addition, uh, in between her chemo doses, right from the very beginning. And she's now in complete remission for over two years. And she's no longer on any traditional therapy at the same time, just DCA. Um, a young lady with uh, ovarian cancer stage four, she got three doses of carboplatin chemotherapy. Um, was deemed to be a failure by the oncologist because of her uh, worsening symptoms and rising uh, CA125 tumor marker and she decided to take DCA as well, and she had a complete remission for two years as a result of the DCA. Uh, Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, we know it works for that. Uh, T-cell lymphoma, sort of a rare lymphoma. Um, young fellow with uh, brain involvement, had stable disease for two years with the DCA treatment, plus natural medicines. 
uh, angiosarcoma, we've seen response. A young fellow with uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine, another very rare cancer, uh, had standard aggressive chemo, curative intent, completely failed. Um, and we gave him intravenous DCA, and we proved um, uh, stable disease by CT scan. In fact, there was tumor shrinkage, but it was less than 25%, so it didn't meet the criteria for partial response. Um, and a 75-year-old gentleman with small cell, one of the most aggressive lung cancers, uh, recurrent small cell, in fact, after treatment with standard chemotherapy, and he had one more dose of chemo, and then he said, I'm not doing this anymore, and we gave him DCA, and it's, he's now uh, six or seven years cancer-free. So that's a publishable case. And then I've got a whole bunch more here. Malignant fibrous histiocytoma, it's a rare uh, sarcoma. Uh, bladder cancer, very interesting. Uh, older gentleman with multiple uh, medical problems, refused to have surgery for recurrent bladder cancer, so we treated him with DCA, and it actually delayed, it, it shrank the cancer enough to delay his surgery by about a year, and then his surgeon again asked him for, uh, to go, and go back and have surgery because it regrew, and then we gave him another course of treatment, and again, he's, um, he's stable and he's okay. Gallbladder cancer, as I said. Um, so there's synergism with uh, natural medicine called Honokyo, which is a magnolia tree extract. And then we've also used it with fermented wheat germ extract. We've seen that these two can work well together. And even um, hormone resistant or um, castration resistant prostate cancer can respond to DCA. So it in fact does have a, a, a diversity of action. It's considered, to, I would consider it to be a broad spectrum anti-cancer treatment. Um, it's very safe overall. Uh, about 40% of patients have no side effects. Uh, and that's based on the dosing that we're using. Um, if the side effects do depend on the dose, um, but the fortunate thing is all the side effects are reversible and the most serious is probably neurological. Um, peripheral neuropathy or, and, uh, typically presents as numbness in the fingers and toes, which sometimes you get with chemo as well. Um, it's about 20% in our practice based on the dosing and the, the treatment schemes that we use and it is completely reversible. Um, sedation and tiredness, fatigue, that kind of thing, about 20% risk as well and completely reversible once you reduce the dose or stop the drug. Uh, can affect your memory, make you a little confused, and sometimes you get a little shake. Uh, worst case, it could cause some hallucinations. Um, if you give too much of it or you persist with a high dose, it can make people a little agitated sometimes. Um, we've noticed some mood changes as well. Uh, heartburn's not that common, but if, if it's a problem, we can give an antacid with it. Um, nausea is not very common. Vomiting is quite rare, but uh, it occasionally can happen. Um, and perhaps related to the mechanism of action, sometimes it works very quickly, and sometimes we see uh, a flare-up of tumor pain at the site of uh, where the patient's having their tumors. Uh, and that, that if it happens early on and then it diminishes, that's a sign of a good response. Um, and sometimes we see some liver enzyme increases, but there's no, no consequence of that as long as we uh, back off with the dose or stop the drug. And then there's some other interesting benefits from the drug, good side effects as I put them. Um, one is it's safe in renal failure, and so that's, that's nice because a lot of other drugs have kidney toxicity and you can't use them. And we've treated patients with uh, creatinine in the three to four range. Um, there's no toxicity from the DCA. Um, it actually can be beneficial in patients who have uh, heart trouble, if they have angina, uh, ischemic heart disease, or even heart failure, it can, it can improve the function of the heart. Um, in, in theory, if you combine it with drugs that prolong the QT interval, it may even reduce the risk of arrhythmia. There's a lab study on that, uh, and it may even improve glucose control in diabetics. Uh, it's also safe in terms of drug interaction. Based on our experience of about, I would say, over 1,500 patients now using this drug, uh, we don't see a lot of drug interactions, and my feeling on that is probably because it's not metabolized by the same enzyme system in the liver, so that, that could be the reason. Um, we just encourage some caution with other drugs that may have the same type of side effect. So uh, drugs that may also cause neuropathy, um, like chemos, or drugs that can cause uh, hallucinations or memory problem, um, for example, uh, marijuana preparations. We just encourage some caution to start really low and, and build the dose up. Um, we also find with the various natural medications, we can reduce the side effects. So, uh, for example, lipoic acid, uh, carnitine, and uh, vitamin B1 or benfetiamine. Um, all of these have nerve protecting or nerve healing properties. 
And so they seem to diminish the side effects of the DCA, uh, and they can also uh, prevent or delay the side effects. Um, they may even have some uh, synergistic effects in terms of boosting the anti-cancer effect of the DCA. Uh, Dr. McKinney has written about that. Uh, he's a naturopath from uh, British Columbia, and he calls his, his natural protocol with combining with DCA uh, mitochondrial rescue, in which he uses uh, some natural medicines here, like, like the ones I mentioned above, as well, along with coenzyme Q10 and quercetin and others, um, again, to improve the mitochondrial function in the cancer cells. Um, I've got an oral protocol here. This is what we use. Um, I guess it's more for the physicians around here. Uh, so the DCA, depending on the patient's age and their general condition, this is the kind of dosing we use, so 15 to 25 milligram per kilogram per day. Uh, Michalaka, so in the original study, uh, they used, they started with 25 milligram per kilogram and they worked up to 50. Um, so they're using double the dosing that we use. And so that's why I think that the patients in the original study uh, likely dropped out. Because if we were to use that kind of dosing, well, we've tried it, and uh, patients get severe side effects. So they either get, either get the neuropathy very early or they get very sedated and very fatigued and they just can't tolerate it. Um, so with the natural medicines I mentioned, this is the dosing. So if we combine the natural medicines, we do find uh, a delay or uh, a prevention of the, a lot of the DCA side effects. And we do some routine blood work, nothing fancy. The main thing is just to look at the liver enzymes um, and then monitor the tumor markers to see if they're responding. Um, and we use an antacid if uh, they get some stomach upset. Uh, we also do an IV. I'm not going to go into the IV protocol, but if anybody's interested in that, they can talk to me afterwards. Um, uh, with chemotherapy, as I mentioned, um, it can boost the chemo or it can interfere with the chemo, and we don't really know in advance. We've looked at our data, and we don't see a definite pattern with, with specific drugs. So we recommend that uh, either to avoid using the DCA together on the same day with the chemo to keep them separated or to do a, uh, an assay where you, you do a test in advance to see what drugs, what combinations will work best for that particular patient's cancer. Because every cancer is different and everybody's very individual. And so in our experience, DCA can be effective for any cancer type. Um, certainly I haven't seen any, any type that it does not work for. Uh, it can work on chemo-resistant cancers because the, most of the patients we were getting at the beginning were patients who had failed standard therapy and they had nothing else, so we tried the DCA on them. Um, no life-threatening side effects in our experience, um, as long as you follow the directions that I had mentioned. Uh, it's not immunosuppressive, so that's a big plus. Um, and also in patients who've had a lot of chemo and their bone marrow is burned out, um, it's safe to use because it's not going to drop their cell count. Um, it reduces its own metabolism, so it tends to build up over time, so you just have to be careful with that. The dosing may have to change over time. Um, and uh, so what we do is we do a cyclic therapy where we don't give it continuously. We kind of do it off and on. Uh, neuropathy is the main side effect that limits our dosing. Uh, so we, we think it's essential to try to give natural medicines with it to prevent the neuropathy. And um, we just uh, watch the liver enzymes, and we prefer using it in combination with other things. So I was very excited today because of the talks I heard this morning um, of the potential to combine DCA with the ketogenic diet or to combine it with the um, glyoxal or uh, uh, fasting approach. And I think that might in fact be uh, a way to get a much better response out of the DCA and perhaps use lower dosing as well. Um, and as I said, we see some palliative benefits. So in terms of quality of life improvement, and then an occasional complete remission, which I don't understand, but you know what, we'll take it. <laughs>